What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of the new PS4 jailbreak tutorial series covering the new 9.00 jailbreak for the PS4. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to offline activate your PS4 accounts. As you can see, I've got two accounts here in the sign-in screen. If I hit the options button on this one, it comes up with a menu saying appear offline and online. That means that the account is activated, whereas this one is a local account. So when I hit the options button, nothing pops up. That means it's not activated. So the advantages of activating your PS4 account mainly comes down to save files. So if you activate your PS4 account, you'll be able to transfer save files to a USB drive, which is currently locked if your account is not activated. So you will not be able to access that feature unless the account is activated. That's essentially what we're doing here, because if we activate our PS4 account, using a real PSN account ID that we use on maybe another PS4 or a PS5, then any save files that we create on our jailbroken PS4 will be transferable and will work on a PS5 or another PS4 that's maybe on the latest firmware, as long as it has that same PSN account on there. So that's the kind of advantage right there. Now, you don't have to activate your account using the same PSN account ID from an actual PSN account. You can what's known as fake activate the account, which just means generate a random account ID and activate the account with that, which will allow you to still transfer save files and it'll give you access to those additional options that you get when you have an activated account. It just means you won't be able to transfer your save files to you know, another device that's running the same account because you activated it with a random ID. So that, those are kind of the, the differences there. So what I'm going to show you how to do here is how to activate the account using a fake ID, which is quicker. And then I'll show you how to activate the account with a real PSN account ID and how to find your real PSN account ID from a, an actual PSN account that you have. Now, before we get started, I do need to mention that you can run into save data corruption when doing this if it's not done correctly. For example, you should be fine if you're on a local account and you've been making save files for your games on a local account and then you are just activating it for the first time uh, because it kind of has a kind of null ID initially and then when it gets activated all the save files should get updated to the new PSN account ID. The problem happens when you have a account that's already activated and then you change it to a different account ID so you reactivate the account with a different ID well then any save files that were made on the original ID will no longer work on your account anymore because you've changed the account ID. So that can happen. So if you're worried about any of that stuff, I would recommend making a new user account and activating that instead of your main account. That way you won't run into any issues with the save files, but it's up to you whether you want to you know, do it with your main account or not. So if I log into an activated account like this one here, my main account on the PS4, I've got a USB drive plugged in that's in XFAT format. And I can go down to application save data management, save data in system storage and copy to USB storage device. And as you can see, it gives me the option to copy to my USB drive. Now, if I don't, if I'm not on an activated account, so if I log out and I now switch over to this new account that I created, that is just a local account. And we try and access the same stuff. So we just head to settings. We go down to application save data management, save data and system storage, copy to USB drive. As you can see, we get this error message. Connection to the server has been lost. You know, if it doesn't give you that error message, it will give you a different one, but it will not allow you to copy to the USB drive. So that's the issue right there. So to fix that, I'll quickly show you guys how to activate the account using a fake account ID, because that's the quick way to get this feature working. So if we head into the internet browser, load up your exploit page, whichever one you're using, so we'll do caro218.ir and obviously make sure you've ran the gold hen payload before doing this so that you have jailbroken your PS4. So run gold hen and once the PS4 is jailbroken, you'll then be able to run the web activator. Now the web activator is a quick way of essentially activating our accounts and it can take a little while to load, but there we go. It's now loaded. So you can see user one, which is my main account, has a ID in there. So it is activated and user two, this new user, is all zeros. So if the account ID is all zeros, that also means the account is not activated. So we can just generate a random ID by clicking on new user. And if we keep clicking on it, it just generates random account IDs. 
So you can just, you know, click that, generate an ID and then set and activate. And there we go, that's activated the account. Okay, so that should basically be it. So if you restart your PS4, you should now have access to that save data option uh, in the settings. You'll be, you'll be able to transfer your save files from PS4's hard drive to the USB drive. So that should work now, no problem. It may take a couple of restarts for the option to work, but if you restart, it should fix it and you should be able to access that option again. So that's the quick way of activating the account using a random ID. Now, obviously the big thing is to activate it using a real PSN account ID so you can then transfer the save files and get them working on other devices that are also using that PSN account. Let's have a look at how to do that now. So firstly, I recommend that we use a PS4 activator tool for this rather than actually using the web activator this time because with the web activator you have to type in the ID you know one digit at a time and if you get one of those digits wrong then the, the saves are not going to transfer and work on those other devices so the ID has to be correct so if you use a tool on the computer that allows you to just copy and paste the ID so you don't have to manually type it in. So to do that, we're going to first of all get our PS4's IP address by going down into system, system information and getting the IP address as you can see down there, 192.168.137.22 in my case. So from there, we're then going to go on the internet browser, load up our exploit host, uh, not the web activator, just the exploit host itself. So caro218.ir. In this case, we'll load up our payloads and we're going to run the PS4 debug payload. This is the payload we need to use in order for the tool version of the activator to work. And now that PS4 debug's running, we can switch on over to the computer. So the first thing we need to do is get our PSN account ID. And the easiest way I've found of doing this is to use the store on your browser. So if you just go to store.playstation.com in your web browser, and then go to sign in to your PSN account, Obviously, if you're already signed in, then just sign out and sign back in again till you get to this login screen. And from here, you just want to enter the username and password of your account to log in. Now, if you're using Google Chrome, and you can do this in other browsers as well, but Google Chrome is just the one I'm familiar with. So in Google Chrome, you can click the little three dots here and go to more tools and developer tools or do control shift I on the keyboard to bring up the developer tools. And in the developer tools, you just want to go to the network section right here. And then from here, we're just going to sign in to our PSN account. And you should see a bunch of data appearing in here when you're signing in. Okay, and there we go. As you can see, it logged me into my account and we get a lot of data showing up here in the right. So all you're going to do is in the little filter section, you're going to search for get profile. So get PRO and you'll get these two things that show up right here. And if we click one of these, we can then go to the responses. If we select the second one here, we actually do get a response this time. And as you can see, we actually have the account ID showing up right here. So this is the account ID. We're just going to right click and copy it and then go to some kind of decimal to hexadecimal converter. So I'll just use this one on rapidtables.com. Again, everything will be linked in the video description. And if we paste in the account ID as a decimal number and then convert it to a hexadecimal number, and then you just want to copy this hexadecimal version of the account ID and paste it into the activator to activate your account. So, so I've got the activator right here. Again, it will be linked in the description. So if we run the activator, we, as you can see, it's pretty much the same as the web version, except we have to type in our PS4's IP address into the box right here and click connect. And that connects us to our PS4. And then we click get users, which grabs all the information of the accounts that are on the system. Okay, and it grabs the account IDs, as you can see here. If you get an error message, just restart the application. It should be fine. Try it again. So we connect, we get users, we get the account IDs. And this is the new user right here that we want to activate. So all we do is copy that hexadecimal ID right there and paste it in here. And then click set and activate, which should activate it on... The account then all we have to do is click get users a second time to make sure it did actually apply the id and if the id does not change when you click get users then it has successfully activated the account with the correct id that's how you activate it using a proper psn account id so now if i go back onto the ps4 and i log out of my ps4 account 
you should be able to see that the account is activated. If I hit the options button, you can see I have the option appear offline and online. So the account has successfully been activated. So the next thing I'm going to do is just restart the PS4. We need to reboot the PS4 in order for the actual activation to take effect so that we can access the uh, the application save data option in the settings. Uh, it does require a restart for that to work. Okay, so back after the restart, if I go back on that new user account, you'll see that I'll now be able to access the save data management. If I go to settings, application save data management, save data in system storage, and then copy to USB storage device, you can see I'm able to copy this Black Ops save to the USB drive. And there we go. It works absolutely fine now because the account is activated. So just as an example, I took a save file, a modded save file I made on my jailbroken PS4 for Days Gone, where I maxed out all my money and all the different encampments and maxed out my uh, like skill points and stuff like that. And then basically transferred that using that activated account over to my USB drive and then copied it from the USB drive to my PS5, which also had that same account on the PS5, just by signing into the PSN account on the PS5. And then from there, I was able to actually load up that modded save file on the PS5 and run that modded save file, no problem. So that's kind of the big advantage there of activating the account using a proper account ID, a real account ID. So yeah, that's basically how you get your account activated. Now, before I end the video, I do want to cover a couple of other things that people always mention uh, when it comes to activating accounts. And that is, for one, your avatar disappears. So if you had a profile picture on your account before, when it was a local account, it will have disappeared when you activated it. That's a problem that can happen. Also, how do you change the name of your account? Because you can't actually, even when it's activated, you can't actually go into like account management and like sign in. That's not going to work. So you can't like change your name or anything like that. And normally on a local account, you can just go into the profile settings and then edit user and that will allow you to change your name. But obviously you can't do that when it's activated because it wants you to sign in to PSN. So how do you change your profile name? How do you change your avatar once it's activated? Well, okay, so I've ran the jailbreak again on my PS4. So to change the user, the best way is just to use FTP. So if I go into settings and I go to gold hen and enable the FTP server, and that runs the FTP server on port 2121. I've got my PS4's IP address there and the notification as well. So if I switch back over to my computer real quick, and then we go on to FileZilla or some other FTP client, I'm going to go ahead and type in the IP address of my PS4 and the port number 2121. And then from here, I can go into System Data, a PRIV, Cache, Profile, and then these folders represent your profile or all the profiles on your on your uh, PS4. So I only have two. I think the first one for me is my Modded Warfare account. And then the second one is the, is the new user account I made. So I'll go in there. And as you can see, there's nothing in here at the moment apart from this version.json. So basically, if you want to add a avatar, like an actual image file for your account, you need to have multiple image files in various different sizes. So you need a, a 64 pixel version of your avatar. You need a 128 pixel version, a 260 pixel version, and a 440 pixel version as well. And they all need to be in DDS format. And you can do this in a program called paint.net. If you don't know, you can resize the images from paint.net and save them as a DDS file direct draw surface file and you also need a PNG version of the avatar as well which is 440 pixels. So if you make those image files you can copy them in to that folder. That won't be enough to actually get the profile to show up. You also need this online.json file which can also be used to change your profile name. So if I right click and edit this in notepad Obviously, this will be linked in the description. So if I edit this file in Notepad, you can see it pops up here and we've got first name and last name right here. So you can just change your first name to, you know, your name, for example, I could do, you know, Modded Warfare, one word here, and then I could just have nothing for the last name and then that would do. Or you could add your first name and last name, whatever you want, and then save it. And then from there, you can just copy this online.json file into this folder 
and that should work. So if I switch back over to the PS4, go on the internet browser, back out, you can see it has added the profile image right there. It still says new user right now. So if I go ahead and log out and log back in, there you go. You can see it has changed to Modded Warfare now. So the name's changed. And if I log back in, you can see it's now changed to Modded Warfare. So, so that's how you change your profile image and your profile name uh, when your account is activated, since you can't do it through the normal means. You have to do it through like FTP, through the hard drive by changing those files on the hard drive. I'll, again, I'll put the online JSON file uh, in the description. But obviously for your actual avatar image, your pictures, you'll just have to make your own images for that if you want to have a custom image for your profile picture. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you activate your PS4 accounts with a PSN account ID or with a fake ID. That works as well. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video or find the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.